Good morning, students. Today we are going to continue with our first chapter, that is crop production and management. And today's topic is manure and fertilizer. We have already seen the manure in our previous video, in our previous lecture. So today we are going to start with the fertilizers. Fertilizer is an inorganic soil which is prepared in factories and which is rich in some particular nutrient like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. For example, urea, as you can see in the picture, there are different kind of chemical fertilizers. For example, NPK, they look like green granules. Next example is super potash. They look like dark brown granules. Next is super phosphate, which is a booster for vegetable crops. They look like mud like granules. And the common fertilizer which is used in the crop is urea. The urea is rich in nitrogen and it looks like white granules. Now the next fertilizer is ammonium phosphate. It looks like salt. Now, what are the advantages of fertilizers over manure? If the farmer want good and fast result in their field, they use the fertilizers because they are highly soluble in water. They are easily absorbed by the roots of a plant. They are made in factories. They are easy to transport, store and handle. Now, what happens if the farmer is using access of fertilizer in their field which makes the soil less fertile because more chemical fertilizer makes the soil acidic instead of providing nutrients they damage the crops and when they are washed away with the water they causes water pollution till now what we have discussed between the manure and fertilizer is already stated in the notes as a point of difference between manure and fertilizers. Now, for example, what happens when a farmer is going crop after crop in the same field? The soil will become poor in essential nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Now, now what will the farmer do? Either he will leave the field uncultivated or he will use manure or fertilizer or he will do the crop prediction. First two methods we have already learned. Now this third method is a crop prediction means what? Growing different types of crop alternately in the same field is called crop prediction. Like peas, beans, groundnut are the leguminous crops. They are alternately grown in the same field with wheat, maize, paddy. Why it is so? Because the leguminous plants have rhizobium bacteria in their root nodules, which directly convert atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen compound, which directly mix with the soil and improves the fertility of soil by which the soil become rich in nitrogen for the next crop. As you can see in the picture, the rhizobium bacteria present in the root nodules. Now I am going to show you the picture of real root of pea, bean or gram in which you can see the rhizobium bacteria present in the root nodules. Now the next activity which is done by farmer is called irrigation. The supply of water to the crops at regular interval is called irrigation. Now why it is necessary? Because it provides the moisture for the germination of seeds. And even after that, the irrigation is done regularly at regular intervals in the field to maintain the moisture of the soil for the healthy growth of crops. Even because of irrigation, the nutrients which are present in the soil and fertilizer are absorbed by the roots of plant along with water. Even the irrigation protects the crop from 
बोथ फ्रॉस्ट एंड हॉट एयर करंट्स जिसको हम हिंदी में बोलते हैं लू गरम हवा राइट ना वॉट मीन्स ऑन विच फैक्टर द इरीगेशन डिपेंड्स फर्स्ट इज द नेचर ऑफ क्रॉप मीन्स इफ यूर ग्रोइंग अ व्हीट क्रॉप इट विल रिक्वायर लेस वॉटर इन द केस ऑफ पेडी क्रॉप इट विल रिक्वायर मोर वॉटर सेकेंड फैक्टर इज द नेचर ऑफ सॉइल इफ द सॉइल इज सैंडी देन इट विल रिक्वायर मोर वॉटर and if the soil is clay it will require less water third factor is a season if you grow a crop in summer season it will require more water if you grow a crop in winter season it will require less water and if you grow a crop in rainy season it will require very less water right now what are the sources of irrigation we already know the sources of irrigation are well tube wells pond lake rivers dam canals but now the question is that how the water will reach from their sources to the field now the traditional methods of irrigation are moat pulley system chain pump dhekli and rahat that is called lever system as you can see in the picture these traditional system of irrigation are very cheap but less efficient and they require a human labor or cattle as you can see in the picture but nowadays modern method of irrigation is used for example the water pump as you can see in the picture the water pump is powered by solar panel or the water pump can be powered by diesel petrol or electricity depends on the area depends on the availability now what are the modern methods of irrigation first method is a sprinkle method this method is very useful for sandy soil or even for uneven land where the sufficient water is not available as you can see in the picture the perpendicular pipes are joined to a main pipe on the perpendicular pipes there is a rotating nozzle which rotates with the pressure of water from the main pipe and after rotating the water gets sprinkled to all over the field as if it is raining second modern irrigation method is a drip system in drip irrigation system there is a network of pipes as you can see in the picture there are many small pipes going throughout the field which are attached to the main pipe now there are holes in the small pipes which are attached to the main pipe through which water falls drop by drop at the position of roots of the plant now this is the best technique for watering the fruit plants trees and gardens and with this technique we can save lot of water and even it is useful for those region where the availability of water is very poor now the next activity which is done by the farmer is removing the weeds now first of all we should know what do you mean by weeds the weeds are the unwanted plants which grow along with the crop as you can see in the picture there are different types of weeds which grow with our main crop and it is very necessary to remove the weeds otherwise they will use all the nutrients present in the soil as compared to our crops now the process of removing weeds from the crop field is called weeding it can be done by two methods first it can be uprooted just by pulling them with the hands second it can be removed by using the weeding tool called trowel in hindi it is called khurpa as you can see in the picture there are many tools to remove the weeds in the next picture you are seeing that how the weeds are removed with the help of a tool from the root even the weeds can also be removed by the spraying special chemicals called weedicides like 24d 
MCPA and butachal. Now the solution of vidicide is sprayed on standing crops in the field with a sprayer to kill the weeds. The main thing is that they only kill the weeds that do not destroy the main crops. Now as you can see the different examples of vidicides in the picture 2,4-D, MCPA, Butachula and how the farmer is spraying the vidicide on the weeds. They destroy only the weeds, not the main crop. Now the next activity which is done by the farmer is called harvest. Now it is the second last activity of our agriculture practice. Now when the harvesting is done, when the crops become mature, then only the harvesting is done. Harvesting means cutting and gathering of the mature food crop. Now the harvesting is done with the help of a tool called sickle. As you can see in the picture, the harvested field is cutted by a farmer with the help of a tool called sickle. Or as you can see in the picture, it is done by a machine called combine. From front, front side of the machine, the harvesting is done and from the other side of the machine, the threshing is done. Now the threshing is next process after the harvesting. Threshing means what? The process of beating out the grains from the harvested crop plants is called threshing. Normally, in the large farms, both harvesting and threshing is done by a machine called combine that we have already seen. Now in the large field it is done, but in the small field, as you can see in the picture, the farmer is beating the crops on the hard surface like iron drum. And here the grains are separated from chaff. In India it is called bhusa or hay, we can say hay. Now after threshing, the winnowing process is done. Winnowing means what? After threshing, the grains are mixed with the chaff and hay. Now again we have to separate the chaff and hay from the grains, which they are mixed right now. So the process is called winnowing. By the process of winnowing, we can separate the main grains from chaff and hay. As you can see in the picture, the lady is pouring all the mixture of hay and grains from her top. And with the air, all the chaff and hay, they are collected at some distance. And as the grains are having weight, they are collected at the bottom on the earth as you can see in the picture. So in this way the winnowing is done. Even it is done by a machine called winnowing. Now as the farmer do the harvesting, the harvested season begins like Pongal, Paisakhi, Holi and Bhiyu. Now the last activity which is done by the farmer or you can say of our agriculture practices is the storing of food grains. Storing of food grains is one of the biggest tasks of the farmer. Now why it is necessary to dry the food grains before storing them? Because to reduce the moisture. If there is a high moisture in the food grains, then it will promote the growth of fungus, bacteria, and insect and even pest also which will destroy and damage our food grains. Now, what are the ways in which we can store the food grains on a large scale? The first way is that in the granaries. As you can see in the picture, the food grains are stored in gunny bags. In Hindi it is called bori, right? And Special chemical is, is sprayed on the gunny bags to protect them from the pests like rats and insects. The second way is to store the food grains in large quantities are the grain silos 
which are made up of metal in those metal drums as you can see in the picture we can store thousands of kg of food grains like rice wheat maize barley bajra etc as you can see in the picture all the silos are built in open areas to have a proper sunlight so that the moisture cannot be built inside the food grains right and even also to protect them from pest insect and fungus now the last topic of our chapter is food from animals as we have already discussed in the starting of the chapter we are getting the food from plants and animals now what kind of foods we are getting from animals milk from cow buffalo and goat meat from goat pig hen and fish egg from hen and duck honey from honey bee as you can see in the picture for that we have to do the animal husbandry animal husbandry is a branch of agriculture which deals with the feeding shelter health and breeding of domestic animals for example as you can see in the picture cows and buffaloes are given proper shelter in the cattle farm right for their milk even in some countries they are breed for their meat also sheep in india the sheep farming is done for their wool and in some countries for their meat also next is the hen hen farming is called poultry farming it is done for the eggs and for their meat even the duck farming is done in india for their eggs and for their meat as you can see in the picture similarly the pig farming is not yet done in india but in other countries the pig farming is also done for the meat called pork fish farming and the prawn farming is done in india to get the seafood right and even the honey bee farming is also done in india as you can see in the picture we are getting honey from honey bees right so in this way we have finished our first chapter so goodbye and thank you